What's up YouTube? It's Mark aka the Movie Buffer back with a new video. So you know, I gotta say first off, right off the bat, considering the amount of bad movies I've reviewed already on this channel as well as how many I've seen in general, you'd probably think at this point I would be more or less desensitized to these types of movies. But every once in a while, there comes a movie that is just so mind-boggling and such a beautiful, beautiful disaster, I can't take my eyes off of it. I mean, it's like a car wreck. You hate to see it, but you just can't help but look at it. And that movie is Samurai Cop. But weirdly enough, despite its reputation, it seems like a lot more people are still more familiar with The Room, Troll 2, or even many of Neil Breen's films. So, what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna try to enlighten you all through this video and grace you with the awesome masterpiece that they call Samurai Cop. But first, if you have not already, feel free to check out my Patreon. I'm gonna post a link in the description below. No pressure guys, if you wanna just keep watching me here on YouTube, that is totally fine. Um, there you will find some early access videos and exclusive content only posted on Patreon. Also, make sure to check out our Facebook page and other social media. And don't forget to like and subscribe as well so you don't miss out on any more awesome experiences here on the Movie Buffer. And with all that being said, guys, let's go ahead and dive into the video. So right off the bat, we get a great taste of things to come with the opening titles complete with a soundtrack that sounds like it was ripped directly from an old arcade game. Yeah, I'm scared too. We are not an established gang yet. My friend, you should be very cautious in my opinion. We should try to make friends with all the gangs, the Japanese, the Chinese. I mean, hey, while we're at it, might as well just include all the other minorities as well. I don't even know where to start with this opening already. So, first off, we're abruptly thrown into this whole conversation here with no context whatsoever. The movie literally goes from opening titles to black immediately opens up on a guy speaking into the camera, giving us all this ridiculous exposition about how they need to be friends with the other gang members and they're not an established gang yet, and yada yada. You know, there is a thing in Hollywood called Show, Don't Tell. And for a Japanese Yakuza gang, I gotta say, this is the most diverse gang I think I've ever seen. So we have two white people, we also have a Asian American, actually Gerald Akamura, the actor you see here, was born in Hawaii. And this is just one of many things in this movie that make absolutely zero sense. So this other rival gang has shown up to have a meeting of some kind with our Yakuza gang here, led by Fujiyama. Where we're greeted with some more terrible dubbing that makes the Japanese Godzilla films look amazing. Just kidding, Toho. I love you. Have you decided to work with us? Kamiyonga. In no way we go under Fujiyama's flag. Holy shit. It's like they decided to record just this one actor's lines inside of a freaking cave. Either that or he was taking a shit while recording. In no way we go under Fujiyama's flag. Oops, my bad, just taking a shit. So the one guy pulls out a knife and stabs the gang leader, and then a fight ensues. And now it's time for Crouching Tiger Hidden Elbow. <laughs> anyway, this guy's clearly not impressed because he pulls out a gun and shoots the fucker in the chest. And then we just cut to all these ominous looking close-ups of the other gang members' faces, and then one of them just says, the job is done. And that's the end of the scene. Anyway, now it's time to meet our two heroes, and if you thought that opening was something, oh boy, wait till you see this. Are you sure this is a good bust? Yeah, cocaine. 
going to go catch us some bad guys. And, you know, I knew this was going to be a pretty difficult review to get through because there is just so much to talk about, even in just this one shot alone. So I did a little bit of digging before this review, and I found out that Matt Hannon, the actor who plays Joe, aka Samurai Cop here, had actually cut his hair once production of the film had wrapped up. Little did he know that a good portion of the movie was still missing, and there would be a shit ton of reshoots that would be done after the movie was already done. So, he cut his hair and was forced by the director slash writer of this movie to put on this humiliating wig. And I love how the hat that he's wearing on top doesn't quite fit all the way over the wig, so it has to kind of just gently sit or rest on top. And it's even lopsided to it, it's just so goofy looking. And also, if we're supposed to believe that he's this badass macho action hero and we are supposed to root for him as the audience, could you at least get the man in a less feminine looking wig? Next we get one of the best chase scenes in movie history is our two protagonists along with their fellow officers in the helicopter chase down the bad guys in their getaway van. Also I love how we have this intense music playing and all these close up shots and this is supposed to be this epic fast paced shootout but you can see plain as day that the van is going like 10 miles per hour and it just looks so silly. Shoot! Shoot him! Ah, hold on! I <laughs> uh, got him! Hey, hold on, hold on, hold on! Oh. Hey man, watch it! Watch it! Oh. oh man! Also, before the chase scene even begins, we get this ridiculous scene in which Joe and the helicopter pilot here openly announce their plans to have sex later on over a police frequency. Okay, Joe, keep it up. Oh, it's up and ready. Uh, you just keep it warm. It's warm and ready. Our tax dollars, ladies and gentlemen. Our chase ends rather abruptly when the driver gets shot in the neck, which somehow doesn't kill him, and then ends up crashing into a boulder, which causes the van to spontaneously combust into flames. Also, I guess getting set on fire somehow causes you to change ethnicities because the actor here is clearly not the same guy we saw drive in the van, and unless the fire somehow burned off all of his facial hair, there's no way because this dude is completely clean shaven and the driver you saw clearly had a mustache. And I love the way the actor awkwardly looks up at the camera as if to say, hey, I'm on fire here, are you guys gonna put me out or what? Like. Are you just gonna stand there and let me burn? And apparently Joe was feeling very horny that day because we just abruptly cut to this. And this is the first of many long drawn out sex scenes that we get throughout this movie that almost make you feel as if you were watching a softcore porno rather than an action movie. Next, we check back in with Fujiyama and the game where we see that he is none too pleased with how the drug situation turned out. So they call him Samurai, huh? Yes. His real name is Joe Marshall. They call him Samurai. He speaks fluent Japanese. He got his martial arts training from the masters in Japan. I want him dead. I want his head cut off and brought here. I want his head on this piano so that every man in my organization understands once more that no katana gets captured alive or talked. Got that? I will bring you his head and I will place it on your piano. Alright, well let's check back in with Joe the Ho. So, I'm lying there in bed with probably the most beautiful woman I've ever met in my life. Hey, what are you talking about? Yeah, hate to break it to you, Peggy, but I think you've been demoted to side girl. So anyway, you get on the phone and you tell me that these, uh, what's his name, Omaha, Yamaha, whatever his face, his name is, right, is after me. So I figured I'm going to have to knock a couple of these guys off. And I know I'm going to get the speech from Captain Roma. I so the two arrive at the hospital in order to question the guy that was burnt up earlier in the van wreck, but when they ask the nurse on duty, she tells them that his lips are burned. Unfortunately, our old pal samurai cop can't seem to keep his dick down. Do you like what you see? I love what I see. 
Would you like to touch what you see? Yes. Yes, I would. Would you like to go out with me? Uh-huh. Yes, I would. Would you like to fuck me? Bingo. Well, then let's see what you've got. Doesn't interest me. Nothing there. Nothing there? Just exactly what would interest you? Something the size of a jumbo jet? And these reaction shots from Frank are just painful. Apparently, the actor had no idea what he was even reacting to because the shots of him were filmed at a completely different day on a completely different set. Which, you know, makes sense as to why he keeps making the same two faces over and over again throughout. So we see the redhead lady from earlier, who we know is the part of the Fujiyama gang, infiltrating the hospital undercover as an orderly. The cop tells her she can't go into the room where the burnt guy is, but she says she has to change the trash, so he lets her go anyway. Where it's revealed that this massive 200 pound, 6 foot 4 man is somehow squatting down comfortably inside this little cart that she's pushing. He pulls out a samurai sword and cuts the guy's head off in a very hilarious fashion, and then places his severed head inside of one of the trash bags. Of course, they end up getting caught and make a run for it, and on the way out, they're confronted by what appears to be just random people, all with the same exact dub voice. Which is actually just the director, as he did the majority of the ADR for his own film. Hey, wait a minute. I want to talk to you. Ah! Oh! Hey, wait a minute. Stop. Ah! Wait a minute, doctor. I'd like to talk to you. Can I see some ID? And now it's time for my favorite action movie trope. The angry police chief. Everything you did was wrong. You're the one that talked me into bringing this moron from San Diego to fight the J Japanese Katana Gang. You know what the results are? A man in our custody lost his head. An officer lost his hand. By the way, this never happens in the movie, at least not on screen that we see, so it seems like a pretty random ass thing to mention. The captain also has a habit of using some very bizarre and rather strange metaphors. I feel like somebody stuck a big club up my ass, and it hurts. I've got to figure out a way to get it out of there. This scene also has one of the strangest and most abrupt endings I've ever seen. You son of a bitch! Come back here, you motherfucker! And now it's time for our hero and villain to finally meet face to face for the first time. Here we get one of the greatest one take monologues of all time. Are you Fuji Fujiyama? Yes, I am. Who are you? I'm a cop. So you're the infamous boss of this shit katana gang, huh? Look, officer, you have no right insulting my client. You have nothing on him. <laughs> and yes, we have. We have many things on him. And this client of yours is going to need more than a lawyer to clean up his shit. Officers, if you have anything against me, then book me. Otherwise, as they say, get the hell out of my face. This is America, land of freedom and law. A man is innocent until he's proven guilty. You have nothing on me. Oh, I got a lot of shit on you. Now I'm telling these son of a bitches that we respect the Japanese of this country who are honest businessmen. And yeah, this is the land of opportunity for legitimate business, not for death merchants who distribute drugs to our children through schools and on the streets. Now I'm telling these motherfuckers that if they continue killing our children to make their precious millions that they deposit in their secret Swiss bank accounts. Counselor, before your lawsuit even gets off the court clerk's desk, 
I'll have their stinking bodies in garbage bags and ship them back to Japan for fertilizer. Got it? And you too. Excuse me, miss. By the way, what's an all-American girl like you doing with a geek like this? Wow, that wasn't completely unnecessary and racist at all. Also, Frank's reaction here at the end is priceless. Hey, counselor. <laughs> we'll see you in court. <laughs> well, this movie may not be very good at telling a coherent storyline, but one thing it can do well is it can keep playing up those stereotypes. Who shot him? He. Who? Him. Who's him? Himself. Oh, he committed suicide. Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah? Yeah. I like cops. My cousin's a cop. Oh, really? Where? In Costa Rica. Oh. Good. What's your name? Alfonso Rafael Federico Sebastian. This is my first name. But oh no, it looks like they're being followed now. So Robert Zadar, who basically is acting as the lieutenant for this game, and for some reason, instead of attacking them and surrounding them all at once, they decide to line up single file. I don't know, it's really weird. Alright, well we're already halfway through this movie and we have yet to see a single samurai fight. So let's see some of those skills. Freeze you motherfuckers! Leave him alone! Uncuff him! I'm in! Mean, uncuff him! Then out of nowhere, Robert Zadar pulls out an Uzi and just starts blindly firing it, also hitting his own henchmen. Maybe he's aiming at them on purpose, I'm not really sure, but what's crazy is they make no attempt at all to get out of the line of fire. And I guess they ran out of blood squib, so I just told that last guy to just jump around and pretend like he's getting shot. Captain Roman's gonna burn my ass. Yeah, he's gonna burn it. Charcoal black. <laughs> it is black. Right on. <laughs> Your partner almost got shot and killed, but yeah, this seems like the perfect time for lighthearted jokes and racial slurs. Next, the captain gets a visit from Fujiyama's lawyer. Surgery to get my foot out of it! Get out of here, you asshole! Leave me alone! I got more I'll important things than a shyster like you! Get out of here! I'll see you in court. You motherfucker, I'll see you in hell! Leave me alone! Get a job! And since we're ripping off Lethal Weapon 2, I guess we have to have a forced romantic subplot between Samurai Cop and the girlfriend of Fujiyama. And during this whole scene, they keep cutting to this creepy ass lion head that's for some reason taken up about 75% of the foreground. I mean look at this thing, it's taken up more headspace in this shot alone than the actress is. And what the fuck is this thing? Why is it on the wall? I just don't understand how someone would look at this and be like, yeah that's, that's perfect, I want to put that on the wall of my office. Next, we get another chase scene between Samurai Cop and one of the gang members. It ends in a parking lot when the gang member basically trips on purpose and lands on the ground. Next, it's time to bust Gerald Akamura. And I'm starting to wonder, is the entire police force here sleeping with one another? Hey, Preacher. Yeah? You and I got nothing to do. Let's fuck. Shut up. I'm telling you guys, this has to have been a porno at one point that was then rewritten to be something else. Also, I love the way he uses his legs to just flop himself off of the bed here. And it was awful nice of him to get dressed before running. Probably because the actor didn't want to do this entire chasing while wearing a Speedo, which I don't blame him for. They decide to put down their guns and fight the honorable way using martial arts. Akamura gets a few good hits in but is eventually taken down and restrained by Samurai Cop. As he's being handcuffed though, he pulls out a gun at the last second but is gunned down by Samurai Cop. And now it's time for some more bad dubbing. 
Who could shoot this in a mafia boss's house? This chicken, I have a neighbor next door, and she has farm animals. And what I did was I jumped the fence, and oh. stole one of her chickens, <laughs> and then killed it. Great. Because I really wanted to impress you. I mean, how could any woman resist his charm? So now it's time to rip off Lethal Weapon 2 some more, where we have the bad guys hunting down the cops one by one in their homes and threatening both them and their families. They end up slitting the throat of the preacher's wife and then stabbing him in the gut with a sword. It looks like he possibly might have survived here, but we don't see or hear from him again after this scene, so I can only assume he died? I don't know. Unfortunately for everyone else, Samurai Cop is too busy trying to get his rocks off. Next, they infiltrate Frank's house and hold him hostage while threatening to cut off his dick. Come on! To talk to me. What, what do you want? I can you kill you now, or I can relieve you of this gift. This black gift. Thankfully, Frank is able to get the upper hand here, holding one of the bad guys at knife point and gunning the other one down. And now it's time to look at some ass. Not like we haven't been doing that throughout the majority of this movie already, but admittedly, it is a pretty nice one, so I'm not going to complain too much about it. Next, they go after Samurai side girl Peggy. And this scene is pretty funny because they're supposed to be torturing her by pouring hot grease onto her while she's laid down on the ground. But you can clearly tell, plain as day, the way it keeps cutting back between Robert Zadar holding the frying pan and then her reaction shot as she's on the ground supposedly writhing in pain with not a single burn mark on her body, but we don't ever actually see the grease make contact with her skin. So you can tell clearly that they are not actually pouring anything on her. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Jennifer. Happy birthday to you. And you guessed it, this leads to yet another sex scene that lasts about five minutes. What's that, like eight or nine that we've had at this point? Seriously, if y'all thought The Room was something, just wait until you see this movie. Alright, come on, Joe the Ho. Time to go catch us some bad guys, remember? That's more like it. So Jennifer gets a visit from Fujiyama while at work, and our police chief comes up with the perfect plan to bust Fujiyama and his gang. But you know something? I don't give a fuck. There's only one thing in this world I want. I want you to find that motherfucking Japanese gangster. I want you to kill him and I want you to kill every one of his men. I want you to turn his house into a bloodbath. Don't leave anybody alive. And when they're all dead, you come back to me. And all three of us will turn our badges in. Yeah, fuck warrants and arrests. Just murder the fuck out of everybody. Why did you come under? Because I'm an undercover cop. And you know you've got a problem when your actors and stuntmen can't even pretend to die convincingly. So Joe and Frank make it into Fujiyama's base of operations, where we see that he has Jennifer now being held at gunpoint. Samurai Cop has a good shot, even though obviously Fujiyama has the advantage, being that he's got a hostage. But then we see that his partner Frank has made his way around to the other side of this wall, as we see him creeping down the stairwell, where he has a clear shot at Fujiyama. Yet he decides to announce himself, thus giving away his position. She loves you, you have to worry about her life, not me. Neither do I. It's your turn now, cop. Say sayonara. No! Frank, you alright, man? 
So with the boss dead, now it's just between Samurai Cop and Robert Zadar, but they want to do things the honorable way. And this is pretty much the longest martial arts sequence we get in this entire movie, which is one of maybe two or three in total. Pretty light for a movie titled Samurai Cop. And I love how you can see as they're twirling their swords here that the footage was very clearly sped up. The fight ends after Robert Zadar gets wounded and then decides to sacrifice himself. No. Leave him alone. He's a samurai. He wants to die with honor. And then we get this weird zoom in, kind of out of focus shot here, and then that's how the fight ends. But we still have time for one last lawn walk on the beach, complete with bikinis and speedos. Seriously, they should have just called this film Ass the Movie, because that's basically what it is. So that was Samurai Cop, and oh my dear, where to even start with this one? I mean, this movie's pretty laughable and pretty awful at the end of the day, albeit in the best possible way, of course, being very unintentionally hilarious. This is definitely a good movie to get shit-faced with, with your friends. Just bring some bud, you know, your favorite alcoholic drinks, whatever, and just laugh your ass off for 90 minutes. This movie for sure gets an F in terms of general film qualities, but as far as a so bad it's good type film, this movie, in my opinion, gets a 10 out of 10. I would, I would honestly give it a 12 out of 10 if I could. This movie hits all the marks in terms of what makes a good bad movie. Terrible editing, bad acting, very bad ADR, terrible lines, line delivery, nonsensical writing, lots of gratuitous nudity, and so on. There would be a sequel in 2015, Samurai Cop 2 Deadly Vengeance, which oddly enough co-stars none other than Tommy Wiseau himself. So those of you who are fans of The Room may want to check that one out as well. So apparently this movie took several years to shoot, which is why some of the shots and the quality of the audio as well as the camera work don't always match up. It was originally set to be released in 1989, but after several reshoots, would not see the light of day until 1991. Now this partially explains why Matt Hannon, the actor who played Samurai Cop, seemed so bored and miserable throughout most of this movie, and that's because he really was. Some time later, after initial production had wrapped up on the film, Matt Hannon, along with several other cast and crew members, would get called back to do several reshoots. By this time, Hannon had cut his hair, and it was far shorter than what we see in the film, so Amir decided to make him wear this humiliating wig that we saw at the beginning of the film. There was actually an interview clip that Matt Hannon recorded himself from his home a couple of years ago that went viral, where he gave his honest and pretty straightforward feelings on the film. I'll post a link to that in the description if I can find it, but it definitely makes for a good laugh. While the movie itself might be pretty god awful, the production and stories that happen behind closed curtains is pretty fascinating and makes for some very interesting lore that adds to the overall appeal of this film. Overall, Samurai Cop might be abysmal, but it makes for one heck of a good time, and is anything but boring. Well guys, that's a wrap on this episode. Make sure if you enjoyed this video, give it a like. Definitely drop a comment down below and let me know what kinds of movies you guys want to see me review on this channel. I love interacting with you guys, and I'm always open to suggestions, so please do just that. And with that being said guys, this has been Marv, aka The Movie Buffer. Ciao for now.